Good afternoon, everybody. Auto Buddy Joe. Uh, we're going to do the floor on the KB International today. The first thing I did was went ahead and make these braces right here and uh, we're gonna get those in place and then we'll go from there. You can see what I did with those two braces. Uh, I just welded them, uh, tacked them in right there and right up there and I've left them a little bit lower uh, than the floor is because I got to make a transmission tunnel as you can see now that those bars are in. You can tell I have to have some kind of a hump there. So I left this lower and I'm going to make the transmission tunnel in two pieces just to make it easier for us. Um, but what I'll do is I'll weld the transmission tunnel to these braces and that will bring me to the height that I need to be flush here so I can make the floor, uh, these floor pans later on. Uh, which will be in this video as well, uh, provided we don't make it too damn long. But, uh, so right now we're going to just take some measurements and get working on the first piece, which is actually going to be going around the transmission bell housing. And then we'll make this piece that comes down the transmission here. Alright, so here's the first piece of metal we got right here. I, You can kind of see it's a little bent up. All I did was press it down kind of to make some uh, judgment marks when we put it on the English wheel. Um, basically all I'm going to do now is take a little paint marker or marker and just mark out a couple lines so I know how much bend I want to put in certain locations versus once it gets here I want to get narrower so I want to be a wider bend towards the outside over here but uh, if you can picture the transmission is more like uh, a triangle, right? You got your bell housings wide, but at the end of your tail shaft is narrow. So I'm going to start it out wider and bring it over, you know, bring it in. And the biggest thing I'm trying to do right now is put as little as I possibly can because I am making this truck standard and uh, uh, four speed. So I have a clutch pedal, a brake pedal, and a gas pedal that I need to have. And these uh, trucks are very narrow, uh, so I, I got to be able to fit all those pedals in here. So I don't want to have a gas pedal on a big hump, if you can understand that. So, um, so we're going to start right now by, like I said, just make the marks real quick. And then we'll start getting it in the English wheel and rolling it out. Uh, also, I did make this uh, wider than it needs to be or is going to be. I just want to make sure that when I bend it up that I have enough metal left to be on my braces here. So uh, that, that's why I did that. more more better and then right here this big one I'm making here that has to be quite a big hump right there compared to what I need right here so we'll go ahead and get the English wheel set up and start doing that maybe I'll mark center too So this is my English wheel, uh, if anybody ever wants one, this is like a dirt cheap one, you can literally go to Harbor Freight and buy this. Um, later on we'll end up using the stretcher on this piece I'm sure, so uh, I'll end up showing you my stretcher, I kind of modified it to fit on this, or my shrinker and my stretcher. Uh, I did modify it to fit on this, so it's kind of one stationary thing, 
But yeah, this is dirt cheap. And uh, like if you went to Eastwood to buy dies or something for an English wheel, it's the exact same dies. Uh, basically, you know, how many companies in the world actually make a cheap English wheel? They're all the same brand is what I'm saying. So when you buy dies, you can just go right to uh, uh, Eastwood and buy dies. Um, when you buy this from Harbor Freight, it literally comes with just one die. But uh, not that I'm any kind of professional because I'm not, but if you use light pressure, it don't matter what die you have. You know, the harder the pressure, the more bend you're going to put with this die that's in it. But if you use light pressure, you're not going to put a big, you know, a big bend in anything. So anyways, uh, it's a pretty nifty little tool. Here we go. Already right, starting to get a pretty good bend, but I'm having the idea that I'm definitely going to have to. I don't have a break or anything to put a bend in uh, metal. Um, anytime I need a break, I usually just go over to my buddy Phil's and uh, use his break. But uh, if I need something in a pinch or something like this, uh, I usually um, I have a tipping die that I can use for making a bend. So uh, normally if I'm making any kind of patch panel, I'm just using my tipping die. Right now I'm stretching it the other way to try and get a little bit of a uh, slope for the uh, bell housing. So as you can see already, we're definitely accomplishing, it's, it's just, I mean, anybody could just take a piece of metal and bend it, but now this is actually strong, and we're going to run some beads in it later anyways, so uh, this will be really strong, but I mean, this is super strong when you do this versus versus just putting a bend in it and, and tack welding it to the floor, that, that does nothing, you're going to have a tin can piece of crap after that. And the more you tighten this down, like I said, the more bend you're going to put in it. So I just gave it another little crank here to go ahead and put a little more bend. This is what I consider the fun stuff. You know, making something that, you know, is not supposed to be around or wasn't wasn't made to be there and we're, we're making it so it is there. So it's kind of cool that way. Just go give it a quick test fit. I'll be right back. All right, so right now I really like the bend I have. It clears what we're doing. So we're gonna break out the tipping die on the bead roller. I'm gonna roll a bead, gonna roll a bead right across the front of this. So it ha ends up with a lip up so I can weld it to the old floor. And in doing that, once I have that uh, bead up like that, I can actually put it in the uh, stretcher and stretch a bigger circle in it or, or make it a smaller circle or I can shrink it and pull it apart so we'll, we'll show you all that too. So this is my bead roller, uh, you can see right there, Woodward Fab, another cheap, it's cheap, it's, uh, I can't remember how much but it's cheap. It's, and again, it don't matter if you buy an Eastwood one or whatever, if you buy the cheap version like this. It don't matter what company you go to, the same company makes all this crap. So uh, the only thing I did do is I don't have the hand crank on mine, only because I'm always one person just working on stuff. So I did go ahead and spend a small fortune on the uh, electric motor from Eastwood, and it bolted right up to the Woodward Fab. So uh, And the stand I have on this is literally just an old steel wheel with a... a three inch pole coming up welded to a flat piece of quarter inch steel and then it's bolted down to that after drilling holes in it so 
Uh, again, just cheap stuff, but it works and it does the job and I, I don't know, it hasn't failed me yet. So, like I said, I made a line across here, uh, just about a half inch. I just did that by hand. I didn't measure it or nothing. Uh, all we're going to do is tip this up so we can put it into the next piece of metal and have a place to uh, spot weld it. So here we go. All I'm doing right now is tightening it down. Uh, I like to get the piece of metal in there first before I tighten it just to make it a little easier. But we're just going to follow that black line. And you see when I'm doing this, it's pretty much going to flatten out what we just did uh, right where we're working. But like I said, after we'll stretch it back out. So, as you can see, that's after one pass is tipped up. Now, this next pass, I'll tighten down just a little more and then uh, put a little bit of upward pressure. Like that. Just let it follow it. I don't exactly know how much I need, but we can always bang it back down if we need to. So, we're just going to put this bend in it and see where we end up. Yeah, so now you can really see uh, she's got a real bend in it now. So we'll go ahead and uh, just, I'm just going to go place that in there real quick, see what it looks like and see what else I feel like we need to do. I like the way this fits in there. Um, you can see right here, I just put another mark right here and then same on the, on the other side, the exact same mark. Uh, that I'm going to tip it as well because those braces I welded for the uh, to use as the bottom of the floor. Uh, once I tip this with that, uh, that's going to let it sit flat on the piece of metal and also so it's going to sit flat on the piece of metal braces that I put in, but it's going to have the hump to hump over the transmission and that'll let me weld this to those braces. So we'll go ahead and tip that real quick. I'm only going to run it through once on each side and then check it because I don't want to get too crazy. Uh, too far ahead of myself, so uh, oh, this this uh, electric motor also has reverse too. You just saw me feed it through one way. Well, because I put that bend in it already, I can't feed it back through on the opposite side. So now we'll put it in reverse and feed it the other way on the opposite side of the panel we just made or that we're making. And I don't know if you saw just a minute ago, I cheated a little bit. Instead of backing her out of there, I gave her a little twist like that to get her out. So that's what we'll do. Now we're just going to test fit that, see what we got.